We're going to do it the right way. So the issue with Mac and CK is a long history, long before the situation with Benji and CK. See, what happened was CK was in a beacon with Mac when Mac first came out from the album. Now, I'm going to be truthful about it. Mac was never an aggressive dude. That's a lie. He Basically, wasn't mean, he but. The situation and lift it out. All right. You know what I'm saying? Very charismatic, so he can bring the people to him. But when he was in the beacon, he landed in nine building, which like a bossy face while Quail told. There was no Eurickets. He's very in tune, but he's not a stupid young man. He know history. Meanwhile, it's lit in the building. At that time, the Bloods were still like very minimum in population. A lot, most of them were in the Bronx, but a lot of them was no running around population, like one or two in any given building with a whole mass of Eurickets that they had to go against. So CK, people like CK was in population, I was in population, Dizzy was in population at the time, and and even, even Pimp, Pimp was a population, and Pimp was Pimp was running road. He was robbing Night King here and there. He was doing a lot of stuff, you know what I'm saying? So he was doing the set. And this is when the, the odds are against us tough. So I'm not going to take nothing from nobody now. Right. So let's now, start this off, right? Overall, a situation happened in the beacon where Night King had cut um, a homie. This is CK's story. We don't need to talk about that, right? And Max not liking each other's story the beginning. Y'all seen the interview. Let's build. First and foremost, if y'all don't know, my name is Pimp. I feel that it's time that I give y'all a good history check due to situations of this interview, right? My name came up twice in this interview. A lot of opinions is on my mind from this interview. Mainly and only to how a lot of things were spoke on that needed not to be spoke on, but that's personal. Facts and my name is the things I'm here to correct, right? Let's talk about Pimp first, right? I came home now on five, gave y'all stories in other forums about this individual in Shockwell. I met him only one time in the hallway Pardon me. One time in the bullpen, and he leaves in the hallway to leave and just salute him. Other than that, in that conversation, never met him. We spoke shout outs. We didn't get into the letter writing yet. All right. Fast forward from that time, which is 95, say 95 November. Um. I started getting a rapport with the individual sometime in the middle of April, late April. He was in North facility. I was in the dog pound, famous dog pound that opened up, educational fact. August 8th, 1996, dog pound opened. We was moved there four in the morning, right? So this is all that time from me meeting him in the bullpen to this time that I say is the pal, which now we get into dialogue where we know each other. He knows me enough to send somebody to me, and now we have a form of communication, which is the suicide. Little Latin King, homie. All right. Quail gets on this platform and says a few things in history that's not true. Clean cut, honest, dry. It's not true. It's many of us that know history, and unfortunately, some people believe a lot of people don't know history. So I'm going to give history compared, unfortunately, but since I say it's not true, compare it to this man's history on this interview, also bossy, with GK Founder, which is not true, with GK Founder OG Shaquel. This is the conversation that needs to be given out because it seems that this will never stop, right? Um, Quell just said when this took place, Dizzy was in population, I was in population. 
he was in population, CK was in population. That is not true. Um, knowing the truth, I know that he just gave you a con function collage, right? I'm going to open it up and I'm going to detail a collage. Why he says Dizzy was in population, he wasn't. Dizzy was with me. Like, people that know the pound that opened up, let's go. Dizzy opened up on my floor with me. Dizzy was in HDM box, moved over, if nothing else, as a fact, after New Year's. Prior to that, I met Dizzy in HDM all for dialogue. Oh, the homie in population wowing, sing words to him. I like him. Get it, boy, do what you're doing. Me and him did that verbally as well. He sent me one kite. I sent him a kite. Me and him at least met verbally in the kite better than me and Quell did at one point. All right. Dizzy gets moved to my block. You know him? That's what my officers say. I don't know him. I never met him in the face. Canard, three block, 1A, flats. Crack me out. Yo, come here. It's two bloods here. Yo, you know them? Wow, who, who, who are they? One of them, shock of blood, GKB, original. Nah, but I, yo, send the homie over. He blood, shit, come on, yo, who are you? Dizzy got the long dreads down. He move him over and smile with his little gold teeth. Yo, my name Dizzy. Oh, shit, my name Pim. Oh, we hug each other. Salute right there. Move him on my company. This is before I got CK moving my company. My company was different, but, you know, he said I was running rogue. The wordplay. Very, very educated. His grandma, ha And I'm going to make that point back up because I don't want to look like it's just salty, right? Because it was a great interview for To Each His Own. I felt you should have just... Left certain things out knowing that I'm going to reply, but maybe because I'm not on a big plateau. But hopefully somebody will want to pass the word. Let's get into it. I was in the box from the day I left Mac, which is Halloween, to July. Again, from October 1995. So about, let me take that back, because it could have been June. Quail might, you know, whenever Quail went up north, I was in population. I was with him in Seg House in C95. He went up north from the same house that I was in. So just say from October to June, or if it was October to July, 96, I was in Bing. HDM's Bing, five block, I mean three block. Oh, boys, Bing. All over. Except for 1B. I ain't going to try and get false credit and stuff like that. 1B would be 1 South. I never went down there the first time. While there, I recall my tutelage of this gang Bing life. But why he say rogue and all this disruptness that's going on between CK and and CK and, and, and OG Mac and population and popping off in the beacon and whoa, let's check it and all that. That's his second, third, fourth information. But second inf information, which he probably got from the bro. Now, that part isn't the problem is when he says in his clusterfuck of how I was running rogue robbing Latin Kings. I robbed a lot of Latin Kings. I had a lot of drama with Latin Kings. That's the first point that we're going to bring up along with this history fix. Nine minutes. I want to make sure I don't run too long with this. Um, I got robbed by Latin Kings. When I got robbed by Latin Kings, I didn't like it because I never got robbed ever in my life before. I robbed so many people. I knew that this was my get back. I got robbed 
told my girl that gave me the chain that I got robbed. And I didn't get no get back. I didn't get injured. Fight nothing. All in one movement. And then packed out the house. So this is what I got to live with in less than an hour. Going to the visit, leaving early, coming back, shit packed up, trying to get in there, creep to the cell, see everybody face, threaten the last guy that I knew, and then shoo, I got to go, which is fall top, the other side of the building. So when you throw out there all these things to make me feel, me, because I don't know how the world going to see it, but I know you made a few Latin kings that don't know me that just don't like just because it was a loss that one of their ancestors or predecessors took from me and many others like me. Um, why you keep bringing my name up with the Latin Kings? And I'm putting this on a video because somebody's going to say, yo, Quell, um, what are you talking about? All right, speed it up. In my last interview, when it was me and Quell, and I was at another brother's plateau, I don't want to mention nobody's name, so nobody feel no type of ways. Um, I let him voice out, and unfortunately, it wasn't cut it, because you see out of all of those in that platform, mine wasn't really a good look. Like, you know, it didn't really, you know, distribute well. It wasn't looked upon well, edited well, and... Technically, it wasn't even supposed to get aired. We were supposed to fix that and redo it over. But, you know, and um, in that, he mentioned the guy's name that I didn't know him. It was like, you know, it was wartime. I picked him. I run up in the library. The first thing I do is yap him and jap him. And he says his name. I didn't like that then. Never mentioned it. It wasn't about nothing. But then when we get in this conversation, in the setting grounds of hearing this conversation, we don't hear nothing that CK did. We never hear nothing that he did, which is the question I want to ask you. Why would you do this, Quell, when you didn't even have beef with Latin Kings when we was at war? Your beef was with Nietzsche, remember? Like, that's why your stories don't keep going on, and I'm just trying to figure, like, how this turned out to you pinpoint in that interview when you mentioned the guy's name, which is a no-no in the rules, and how you say in this interview with minor little things, I ain't going to drop their name and say something, you will willingly put these other people's names out there. Like, these people don't got long, 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 like we got long, long, long next generations. This one, you, he's running, row, yapping kings. What's the purpose of that one? I was doing more than that to anything that moved. You don't want to say everything that I did down there? So this is when we're going to curve that, but I'll come back to that, right? He says, the guy naming that one, which is a no-no. Then he gets on this one, and out of all the little people and the bloods that he could find a story on, other than the ones that he set the plateau not in his in his like you know far years, he mentions them, which is the hat and the two different hat situations, and you know up in Wendy's and all these other things. You don't mention nobody but me. Running rogue, rogue is not a part. Doing a whole different agenda. What agenda are you saying that you was on? Because I knew our agenda was don't stop, won't stop. Five alive, six must die. Red light, green light, bang, bang, bang. But I'm going to get into the history at the same time. Let's squeeze it. 14 minutes. All right. While you saying I was running rogue, let's say what I was doing when I was running rogue. October, I'm GKB. November, GKB is the only GKB member on one A's whole forum, me, G Money, Nine Trey Gangster. Um er, damn, I'm bugging. See, that's how a story gets messed up. From the time that I am with G Money, I'm Nine Trey Gangster. All the way until I move around in my run around rogue stage, this is how we did it. G Money, as soon as we get there, put in work. All right. Running amongst, 
Nah, two Billies running around in HDM. All right. Gambino come over. This is how you do real story. He's non-trey. My first drop that I ever made, Billy Badass, hence code name, Billy Badass. He comes over to the block. So when time moves around, by the time it comes to the story of me meeting Quell in the hallway, he falsely perceived, showing me all that big jury and say, if you're going to yap that, get this. These are the homies that I'm with in the block. All right? And along with that, when I mentioned that, I didn't explain. When I was bragging about the shine I just yet from a king, if you want to keep talking the talk, um, he pulled out his jewelry like, yo, if you want to do something like that, get this. And it was all Brock, Rock Kim looking shit. But what he didn't tell me then is he got all that off the visit because that's what he had in the street. He didn't get none of that business up in the system. So since that direction was misleading, I met him false the first time I met him. All right. And yes, I never yapped nothing skinny ever since then. So it was a plus regardless of the misleading. It was a plus because I never yapped a little chain ever again. Anybody. All right. So when this is happening... Um, February, while I'm running a rogue and yapping everybody as he say, only thing I was was one blood, two blood, three blood, four blood, maybe five the most was in the block ever with me. Now, when I'm up in three block, it's back to pimp, dolo. Then another homie comes in that I make, pure blood. Yes. So, while I'm running a rogue, I'm setting a standard. Oh, yeah, we GKB now. You know, this is February that I'm in. You know, I skipped all that New Year's, come over there. You know, me and G-Money split ways. They moved me to three blocks, shut shit down, moved me back over there. I'm over there for New Year's with Ty Ty Gambino. We all on, yeah, you know, but a lot of people don't know these stories, but I'm running a monk. I'm nobody in the form how you said it. You just made me sound like a little Indian, like I wasn't a front runner of anything I did with anybody, and it was never about a status, because we didn't have status back then. Only thing we had is bang, boy, because I was groomed right. Yeah, I was brought home by the person that y'all want to try and damn, but everybody kept his title, OG Mac. Everybody can call him a rat, because that's what he did, but he was a rat before we all put a B on our back. If y'all want to get technical, right? So if y'all want to throw away these history things just because he ratted it and it makes y'all feel good, cool. Well, I'm going to be different because I'm already treated different. I'm hated different. I'm loved different, liked different, utilized different, used different. So fuck it. I'm different, different. So we're going to do it in the right format. And unfortunately, Quill, this isn't a great interview for us as brothers. But you have an agenda that I can't let you do in front of me. Because it's like you keep saying fuck me because I'm nobody. You will let me hear and see all this. I'm not dead. I don't got life forever. You utilize things that you say Mac do that he don't have no voice. And he's not dead. The same guy that you tried to let me believe Mac was dead. OG Mac is not dead. And if he was dead since he's dead with no voice... I'm alive. There's many bloods that are alive. Don't get it because you don't hear the stories from them. These people don't still live from back there. And since it's so fucked up that people can't talk about the good times with Mac because y'all caught up in peer pressure, y'all motherfuckers don't even know history. And it's people like you, Quell, that will play the chess game. So let's just smash the chess pieces and let's all start playing pity pat. You know, ID fucking clear wall. None of this strategic, strategical, let's get back to topic, right? So while I'm a monk, I mean, a rogue, and I'm a monk's being fortunate to say I'm out there doing these little things that you're saying I'm doing, I could sworn I'm building this platform because before GKB came about, I just was a non train moving accordingly. When CK seen me perform and he seen me move, me and him met as another non-trade homie that he met, not from Brooklyn. He didn't meet me with no bow and try and be nothing. I didn't grow up with him, as you saying, y'all hear you, his big brother. Oh, man. So when he meet me, he just see the homie that's in me. 
He know who I am, not who I am in a long rep. He knows who I am like he knows I'm max to the ledge. Because there's nothing to hide that. Yo, you, yo, my oath came from Mac. I knew my oath back and forth. So it, you couldn't G-check me and find a floor. You can only look at me and be impressed or maybe learn from me. So when he said, yo, homie, let's make a hood from Ben giving me information about who out who was all of our superiors. This one superior's case was so fucked up that nobody else helped me with this type shit. But when I found out what was going on, I was like, nah, fuck this blood shit. I don't want to be with this shit no more. Huh, I'm good. I tried to holler at him. He ain't want to holler three times. It didn't happen. It's time to end this chapter. Corey then says, nah, let's make our own hood. Corey never says, I'm making a hood. Yo, come with mine. So I don't know a story that you want the public to get. So let's start from the beginning all over. Maybe I didn't explain how it happened, right? Maybe y'all can't really put one and one together. And this ain't times. This is a one ad shot, right? You're going to get two. This is the cheat sheet, right? If two individuals make something and they make a foundation of it, and in the course of saying it, saying I'm one and you two, that's foundation. If you wasn't right there, that's not foundation. Now, are you one that put on? Hell yeah. But I'm going to point that one out too. Bring G Money home. Get Corey over in the block eventually. GKB gets made. Corey leaves. I'm still there. All right? So now we on that segment. Again, I will help this knowledge to y'all again. GKB, the very first day we sat down in the Lawberry and said, yo, let's make a hood, was February 9th, 1996. February 10th, a brother was sitting at the table with CK that I had my eye on in a malice, negative way. Like he says, I was robbing Land Kings. I would have robbed anything because I didn't have jury and I'm back to rob mode, all right? And unfortunately, I had that type of mind. I wasn't growing yet. I still was in, I'm not fully recovered from that loss of the one robbery. I don't care how many I got since that day I got robbed. I'm not recovered. So I had that mind state. So I remember this very clearly because he's at the table and I'm laughing because they holding the B as soon as I sit at the table and CK tells me put his hand under their B as he brings Rob Lowe home and I'm their witness. And I'm like, ah, right, I think I said it. Like, yo, I ain't gonna lie, homie. I wanted to rob you. I think he said some shit like, Paul, you don't know what you was. And I'm like, yeah, we would have went through it, da, da 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 But that was the 10th. Because the 11th, I didn't even get the bill with this brother. The next day, he went to population. And I'm like, oh, shit, I tell the shit to CK. CK said, I'm leaving tomorrow. He leaves on the 12th. So watch this. I told y'all when I seen Quell, never seen him ever again. From that time in the bullpen, which is November sometime. This is February. We're not throwing kites. He's in two block. I'm in 1A, five block, three block, back to 1A, three block from October to April. That was my little journey running around up in HGM that they wouldn't let me go to population. Shout out to Sha Nitty. Shout out, you know, to the other brothers because Shanitty was the homie that I met through CK before CK was on my side. Like, yo, that's my bro. Boom, 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 boom. Holla at him. He's peoples. Shanitty was a blessing because he was the Latin ear. I had none without even me asking him. That's what made me grow into him because as soon as he heard them talking about me, he told them, check it. Go outside with him. Stop running your mouth. Yo, what you talk about? And Sha, Sha, like, nah, these faggots up here talking about, yo, you down there and they going to get to you. And I'm like, oh, yo, tell them to come to the yard. Act Sha Nitty, Third Street, Black Wall. So we could get into moving forward. Um, We all leave, go to the pound. Shaquel's in the North facility. Um, Shaquel is the messenger speaking to me. He's letting me know a lot of things. Now, he did one thing that happened out there when shit went funky out there. As he told his story and something else in the same conversation I said when he exposed the individual that I ran up in the library with with my baby brother, KB. I know who he be. Um, 
Well, I had one incident with MK Scar. Rest in peace, Scar Valentine. MK, pardon me, not MK. Wrong K, rest in peace. And then I never heard nothing again. But the 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 incident was so good that I'm like, ah, the boy tactical, you know, James Bond shit. Go in one house, they all get away. I don't know the truth. The way he kicks it, I, this is what he told me. And I never act like I was there. I was in the pound, right? I, or I was in HD when that incident happened. Only he can tell you the date when that went down. I don't remember that. All right? So... When I'm up in the pound, I could have sworn it was eventually only me, Doggy Dog, Raw Blow, Master Killer, and that's it. Eventually, we grew. Raw Blow bought a brother home, Bulky. Bulky, which is Bulky Stone. Bulky bought Ty Guns home. Mm, yeah, Gangsta Killer Blood. That was the next to expand. And then you catch another homie over here, like a split splash. Then you catch a homie over there, like a drama. And you know, we start growing. But like he says, I'm running rogue and I'm just robbing Land Kings. But I could swear to God, Pimp had the pound on his back a lot of times up in them times. Like, guidance, help, buttons, and let's go. Because there was no peace treaty with me when there was a lot of other people that had peace treaty. Now, mind you, not only did I get robbed... I got raw by dudes I embraced because I was like, you know, oh, y'all cool with a guy that I was cool with. You know, the 52 fake out. But yet, how I got cross, because any, any other time I never would have met these guys to say nothing to them. And I would have looked at them like otherwise. They got me befriend. And that's a whole nother other story. So there's no peace in my heart. This is my first robbery. Imagine you getting raw for the first time and all you did is rob. Like, you like 100 and 0, and then you get robbed by dudes that sniff your shit up. So let's fast forward. So um, while we all up in the, 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 the pound, Quell is communicating with me. And at no point did he say, yo, y'all need to be easy. He was like, yo, you know, y'all brothers should chill so y'all could come out. And I'm like... That wasn't really a topic to, like, vibe on. But that, like, came later on, pardon me. That didn't happen early. That happened later, later, like, June-ish, right? So it was June, I believe, we went to population course. He had got sentenced, and I was like, yo, come down to the bing. I don't care where you go. Anywhere. You're going to get moved down to my block. It's 10 days. I just want to see you before you go. Mind you. Never been with this individual. Only seen him in the bullpen. He came out while I still was in. We saluted. He went to his house. Now we got a basic conversation. I started getting to know the brother. I'm like, ah, he one of us. Now, mind you, I ain't going to go into the dialogues of how he never spoke to me like he was above me or equal. He always, yo, big homie, what was this now? I don't want to do that because that's my talk and his talk, but that ain't have nothing to do with history fact on the history basis of input like he gave you. So let's do that real quick. Um, We had NYB, B-Train, the B-Game, pardon me. So that's how we'll begin the Scarface. We have no name. We have only a foundation that the homies is down here on the island, whoever these are. They're not going for y'all dealing with the blacks. Now they got to let people know that they blood. Oh, those are blood scar faces. Cause they be blowing homies. That's what it is. Pardon me. They be blowing the records, enemies, Latins, because that's the only person that people seem as the enemies. This is the basis of the beginning. Um, 
The next hood that gets grace is as he says it. Non Trey Gangster. At the same time, but he says a different time. I never knew it was different, but I'm also looking at how is get the same treatment I get when it comes to certain people's dialogue. But he says GMB was down the line. All right. And Elmira is how my history came. That's where Iz was given to it because now trades down on the island. He gives Iz for Elmira and tells him, you set the tone up north because he was up north wanting to do the same thing, but he could never do so because when he came down as the fake history, as he says, mumble jumbo, as he say, but he's following, you know, the movement. You know what I'm saying? Um, he couldn't say Miller Gangster Blood, so he came down to the East Coast and gave Gangster Miller Blood away. All right. After that, you have Valentine's Beacon. He was about to go down. Shaolin was there. Shaolin rolled with Mac like, nah, y'all ain't doing nothing to him. They got busy. He gave Shaolin a hood. All right. I didn't know, but I always kept it up the air because I did know Nalo and... When he says that Mad Dog was given out, that is true. All right. After that, you have us. We number six. You have GKB. After GKB, you have 1A Trey. Because Dizzy was with me from the beginning of February to, say, maybe May. HDM to old boy. All right. Kevin Milton <laughs> was with me all this time, and his whole thing was like, yo, what the hell are y'all talking about? Yo, what's that? What's going on? 001, this, then, and the third. Which is the first pamphlet that Quail tried to say he did a manifesto of 21 pages? I would like to know who the fuck had that remix? Because I never had that one. I could have sworn it was like maybe four or five pages. It was the very first page that had, you know, 001 all the way to 042. It had Superior 1 all the way to 10. Um, It also gave the statues of the individual. So if that was one page, that was two pages. Then you had the Constitution. That was maybe one page, but max it, two pages, four pages together, right? All right. Then we had the concepts of war, right? That wasn't more than two pages. So say that was two pages, and that was it. It wasn't even a gall body, seven pages. If it was more, please somebody input, because we do know it wasn't no damn 21. It wasn't no manifesto like he gave a big build and a guidance like he's trying to play the game with speaking about dealing with, you know, T. Rogers that was not loved over here like that because he was bombarding and coming over here and trying to utilize the individuals. It's a whole nother other story, right? All right, so um, after we had 1A Trey come to fruition, um, I will say then... We have M S B, right? M because this was I could have sworn we had I said M S B, my bad. Um, we had the Mad Swan Bloods, but he said there was Mad Stone Bloods, which was and I was confused on it because I was like Mad Dog and yeah Mad Stone, but. That happened afterwards. You know why it happened afterwards? Because this is one of the times when OG Mac came down to court and from the facility, they threw him in the pan at one time because if anybody knew he was strictly a family court, he'd go to family court downstate, they'd send him right back. That was the gimmick that he got lined up with him and his lawyer because he knew it was over with. And this was his time to come down on the island and be down here for a nice little long run. Since the very first time he came down on the island trying to let blood live. So which was the best strategy he ever did because once he was down here all this time up and down, he always set his paws everywhere he went. And this is how blood started growing and started spreading out. All right, giving out hoods like that? No, it wasn't like that. It was incidents these people was around him. Like, if he makes a hood and he starts something, he's with 5'9". When he's over here, he realizes he's making a non-trade hood that he has down on the island that he's not going to be with. He had to send it down. These is not giving out hoods. These is putting position and getting this brain child of his to grow, which is the UBN nation, right? 
um, when it came, who gave non-trained UVN, none of that credit, it was really looked like, you know, it was something that was going to stagnate us. I don't even know why this was talked about, but this Mac is the fan favorite thing right now because he's a rat, okay? So, um, let's go to after you have, um, Matt... You had the man at um, Madstone, which was Hamo. He asked Hamo in the bullpen. He says, yo, um, the homie asked him that he wanted to go. He wanted to come home and be blood. Mac looked at him, you know, the non-aggressive guy that he said he was, cocky, very manipulative. And when he had to, he did things that he had to do. And this was one of the things he did was, was his mind power. Charismatic is what you want to call him. He was very manipulative. Let's just call the spade a spade, right? So the homie told Hamo, like, yo, you want to come home? All right, knock that police out. Hamo went and knocked him out. Puerto Rican Hamo. He gives him the hood. That's how the hood came, right? So right after that hood, he gives the hood to a brother that's very good with us, right? Pistol Pete. He tells Pistol Pete to let me know when he goes outside in the yard, call up to me and let me know. And that's how the population, by yelling up to the window, I learned that now SMM is now down with blood. From the hood SMM, from Soundview, is now down with us. Yes, Pistol Pete was told to tell me, me, the guy that he's not saying, Matt had a great conversation with that I'm not speaking on yet. But... This is what Mac did with Pete, which is Mac still above me. Same time, because they always on five. Everybody need to know. Lacey, Pure Blood, Sean Nitty, Petey. You know, so many people that was upstairs. But I was in there. So it's hard for him to give you this, because he wasn't around this type of stuff. All right? So now, the next hood that comes about is Ty Gunn's hood. Which Ty Gunn's for 30 days. So... This is right. Let's do this thing in part. So, if this is April, then May. Yup. See, I'm right on point. Ty Guns was told to tell me when I come outside at his window. He was in two south. Pardon me. He was in one south. He was on the second floor. He was told to tell me when I come outside at 7, 8 o'clock night wreck that we have to let me know direct that he left GKB. And he was given Bloodstone Villains. So, I know I'm not wrong because I know Stoney going to say, yeah, our birthday is boom, boom, boom. I'm right in the same area. What I won't do is try and put a date on something. I don't know. When I put a date on it, I know it. So, let's also backtrack. Nine, we was made. Ten, Rob Lowe went home. The eleventh, pardon me, ten, Rob Lowe came home. The eleventh, Rob Lowe went to population. The twelfth, CK went to population. So, that leaves thirteen. 14, 15, 16. Anybody out here, I challenge. Shaquille told me that he never did the 17th. Like Cal told that he told you on the interview, he said the 16th. I know for a fact it's thousands of y'all homies that know it's two, 17, nine, six. From the pamphlet only. The pamphlet was written down. It said GKB. Two seventeen ninety six. Anybody that had this pamphlet that I said with the contents of war, bond institution, the breakdown of superiors, what their titles was, because that's how Quell got where he was. That's another story that has nothing to do with this conversation, which I'm not going to speak on. Why? Right? Um. And how can you be a founder if you're not one of the first five? Like he's not one of the first five, and that's not a bad thing. It's who. People was put there before, and he's the one that wrote the pamphlet. Like, y'all remember where his name was, right? You remember who was at one, two, three, four, five, six, because the position. All right. Well, I only want to give history and facts because the problem with this, me not saying nothing and you doing what you're saying, is you saying it's a fact and using maybe your high, high populated love right now. With my low, don't fuck around with him vibe, you're trying to make it look like the truth don't exist. And I don't know what your hidden agenda is, but we got to stop that. Honestly, real talk, because it's too many people that have been blaming the elders for the longest, right? And I'm not going to play the advocate for the youth and try and twist this thing, but the youth has always been next. And the unfortunate fact of it is 
youth that's supposed to be 30 blessed that still hasn't got their love. 40 blessed that still haven't got their love. So you giving the wrong message is going to fuck up these 30s and 20s that's taking over right now. And they're going to come malicely because some of them really got facts from their big brothers that still got all this paperwork. If you can hold tickets from yourself, what you think thousands of bloods did without history? You think this was a joke for some of them? Another story, right? So after we got our brother... Ty Guns is a stony. After that, we eventually don't get no hood until we get UBL, which is the L game. Right? Right? Now, let's go to the beginning of this, right? I said the B gang at the beginning, which is NYB, all the way down to the L game, which is eventually our B to the L, which is also the breakdown of the blacks and the Latin, which is a reason for him to put this whole thing together afterwards when he learned. Then we do know we had a second generation with the hell raises, with the Benji's old Trey wounds, with the yada yada use, right? Um, so let's hit a few things I'm gonna check, right? That was one of the things, right? Um, that five high OG thing. Er, let's back up. Let's get into the conversation where Quell tells y'all that Mac asked him to spearhead it, right? Spearhead the hood, GKB. Now, I don't know why you're trying to get this type of glory. This is from me to you, CK, in front of everybody that's hearing this already conversation in play. Um, Mac has no voice, so now you want to tell me in the streets. Less than two years ago, we didn't have arguments about this conversation. I never say yeah word and left it alone. So you knew that this was going to cause a response out of me. I don't know why you keep trying to tell the world that Mac ever came to you and asked you to spearhead the hood. It's bad enough. Now, this is where it looks like it's personal, and I apologize, y'all, to everybody. But this one is like an exposed conversation. It's not no corny shit come out the closet. So we ain't got to bring too much into this. But it's a detailed fact, right? Um, When I made the hood with CK, I never even thought about doing that. Meaning, leaving the hood that my OG brought me into. And I'm like, fuck this. What I did do is contradict something he told me to do in my teachings, which was this, in my teachings. When I came home, he told me to strip my name and throw it away. <laughs> Act like you ain't nothing right now. Keep everything in you, but right now, you're nobody. Now that you know you're know nobody, you're a blood. Do me a favor. Take that. You got to start letting people know who you are with a blood attitude and take it to the top with me. That's what he told me in my teachings, right? All right. So when he later on comes around me and I tell him everything that takes place, what you don't know is a conversation that we had. What you do only hear me tell people is I wrote him a five-page letter, which y'all know jail figures, a five-page letter of legal pad. It's a long-ass letter. And the five pages back and forth. So that's 10. It's many that know how me and Mac rocked on the Allen. Many that don't know how me and Mac rock. But those that watch me and him rock on the Allen, some of them got to learn our history, right? Which you're trying to dampen, right? And I don't mind bragging about what I had with a dude that I don't know turned into a rat. He didn't harm me or none of y'all motherfuckers. What he did for y'all to know he's, he's a rat, he came down and he expunged the individual that he allowed to be in jail from ratting, playing mind games, calling a crime that he had nothing to do with, all that fuckery shit that he did. Y'all got a fact? Once he got in the paper, prior to that, y'all had fuckboys in the system and y'all had some gangsters in the system that wanted to promote it. Y'all had them with a the paperwork that y'all couldn't even touch. So, unfortunately, a lot of people knew about this stuff. I knew about this shit in 9-7. Pardon me. Yeah, 9-7, because now it's past New Year's. When I was with um, um, CK, 
up in, in, in Blinton. When I was in IPC, unfortunately, because that bitch ass dude that put me in there, CK was in there because of another incident. We both land in there. He's my porter in Blinton, IPC. What, 45 days I was up in there? They didn't keep me in there long. They got me up out of there. All that time, CK torn it back with me. Me and CK, very first argument was him doing that. And I'm like, yo, stop doing that. He knew where me and Max Vi was. So here's the funny shit. He never used none of that shit that he had Mac unless he utilized using me as making a hood. But Mac didn't show the world, me and his staff, or CK to find me and say, yeah, let me pick him to bring the hood like he needed me. So I never seen that, but CK did manipulate me because he did know that ain't nobody ever do that, to my knowledge, independently just make a hood. And I only made it because I wanted to be in a blood ride still. But I wasn't following my old hood because I didn't get information that I needed at that moment. All right? Quell wants to say that the high five, and don't mention the low five, which was real weird. I didn't understand why he did that. But I guess maybe him saying hi because at one time he was given the selected seat from Mac. He's trying to make himself in a certain forum that's bigger than what you did. You could just be big and love right now if everybody, I think, know how you carried the GKB history. But it seems like you want to put yourself in more higher experiences in this history thing that you didn't really impart in. If you hear his story, what the hell did he tell you? Like, his long story about the Wendy situation, the long story about talking about Mac murder with the situation with CK and the kite and all that shit. Um, then talking about lie. But everything that could have been important for us was thrown away. But since this wasn't the form, because everybody wanted to hear the conversation about, you know, whoopty and, you know, get money, you know, this how this whole thing I felt was Purposely misinformed. Let's tap around that to hit you with the saucy shit. But as long as that little shit is out there with all these views that people going to look at, it was done. Uh-uh, not on the kid. Watch, right? So trying to speed it up since I'm going a little too long with this. Um, It was 10 OGs that was made, right? And the fucked up thing out of this whole thing is, Shaquille, you keep trying to tell the world them highs had some over the lows in the system. You and four others were high OGs. You said it, a revolutionary, not just what you was trying to talk about. The revolutionary was a part of the streets, which was a part of you being a high, which the world needs to know. The high 10 OGs was given in 9-7. You have five OGs high. You have five OGs low. High. You had Wayno, Shaquel, Is, Tankhead, and Dada. Right? Then you have Low. Rob Low. SI, rest in peace. Magoo. CK. And yours truly. The only thing the high had over the low was one thing. All 10 was equal. The very first 10 that Max said, these would be my extra and my voices, the run the hoods they're part of and the hoods that's around the UBN nation that he can now see growing. He gave 10 honoraries the obligation of getting, I believe, your first real award, right? The only thing the highs had over the lows was community values. Anybody that know about when the U game came about, it was all about the neighborhoods in our community, community values was going to start branching out with bloods out there and the highs was allowed to dictate anything that happened in 
the streets because the mind state of the historical part of these individuals was what Matt told me in front of the whole box in Bombstock, in front of the whole long-term keep lot in Bombstock in 9-7. Matt gave this conversation with me in the shower while he's on the first floor in the box. I'm in the shower. I come with yo, I ain't fucking with you. Like I said, we had a certain conversation that blew a lot of people's minds away because nobody knew me and his relationship. We didn't talk like we had to talk like bloods, like we couldn't be who we were on how we dealt with each other. So this is how the conversation go. Yo, I ain't fucking with you, shy boy. Yo, what the fuck is up? Yo, my boy. Yo, 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 yo. After all the loves there, because he is OG Mac. I'm like, nigga, I ain't fucking with you. I'm like, yo, how you ain't pick me as a high? Why I'm a low? And these niggas is a high. Truth is true. This is what I said to him. He go, nah, it ain't like that, yo. Not for nothing. Yo, you got to grow up when it comes to revolutionary history books. You went to that. You doing that. You know about this. You know about that. This person, that person, this person, that person, this person. And if he named eight person, I knew about three of them. So I'm like, nah, 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 but, but, but. And he was like, yo, see, these people is more inclined into this type of thing that I'm speaking about. These are the type of individual, if we got to come with structures like the Panthers did and had rules, we're going to have all these community guidelines, yada, 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 out on the outside. So if you got individuals that got this history, if they can't do nothing else, they can extend these things off to the individuals with the actual purpose while they there to teach these individuals yada you. Oh, well, I ain't gonna hold you. I'm hood boogered out. I don't. I don't got all that. Damn, this nine seven. I ain't had no time to be reading it. Meaning that type of stuff that he was saying. So yeah, you right. Let me fall back. That ain't my role. You got that. No problem. Right. And since I see how this is going on, we're gonna do a part two, right? In a few seconds. Because we on 52 seconds. And I want these things out, right? Because we ain't going to keep doing this shit back and forth. Even if you come, you can have all that. I'm just giving you history for. And it's not to dampen him, but it is to dampen him because he's purposely lying on things. Not everything. Because I'm not into the shit that I don't have nothing to be with. But when you start saying I'm running around on there, I had some of them that was cool with me too. Like the, the person that was sending kites back and forth with me and you. He was a king. <laughs> I ain't do nothing to him. And I could have raked him in all types of shit. He trusted me to the point where he smoked like, come on, boy. Like, but you thought I just was a ravishing rabbit because you haven't been around me. You you with the dudes that wanted to suck up to your passiveness, like you know who you are, passive aggressive. Your passiveness at times in the smooth architectural. The 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 architect the articulacy that you blah, 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 I'm fucking this whole package up all the architect way articulate ways you discuss stories I make a person just get warm and cuddle down and drop their defense around you and that's cool I ain't trying to seduce, seduce none of these niggas keeping it official with you I ain't even think we was gonna be big and I still ain't even past years on the talk right but he's trying to say Mac said front runner crew and him being in the five I need y'all to run this UBN party thing I'm about to put together who the fuck did the other five doing you only knew your job but this is what you want to tell other people because these are the conversations you had on the background conversations that people that you heard that heard this is going to eventually see this interview. So you rather just go with and press and let them hear it than the thousands of people that are going to look at it that like, nah, that ain't true. Because you think everybody is not around because they're not out here. It's, it, it's so many people in the streets. Like 380. Like, it's like so many people that I don't, like, this is just different, right? But um, that ain't what happened, man. And you saying all this, he went to run to you and all this shit like you was on a like on the island having this conversation. Like right now, I know the date, but just for the wreck of it, you know what I'm saying? 
Give me the date when you found out you was a high OG. Because I know when I found out, man, you bumped heads. When I found out, because you was ready to go against on that high thing because you was already saying you was going to play the manipulation with the people that was around you. Like the people that don't know no better. Like the people that likes to say that they next to the trophy when they don't even believe they was a trophy yet. All right. Um, you saying that Max said that he didn't want CK to run the hood, but he ain't going to holler at the dude that had the hood with him. He's not going to tell me the, the plan that he got to give to you. I ain't going to tell that letter. That letter wasn't for y'all. That was for me and him. And that wasn't a letter that was passed around like the proof had to been given out. Ask anybody that was in the panel. Remember, I'm the one that did the codes 275. Where was you, Mr. Honorary? He know goddamn well that I ain't going to be running around doing this shit. So I never would have got picked for it. And if I would, I would have got that shit pushed to the side so fast. I would have told him, no, I'll pick somebody for you if you can't pick him. My goal wasn't for this. My goal was to get home. It's just that we got in this and then we did good at it. And then you had people like me that played the role of making a hardship against the enemies so they can eventually stop oppressing our people. But no, I haven't heard none of that shit when you talk. I hear glorifying and damning. And that's cool too. I'm not here to have those opinions. But you're going to say that he said he didn't want CK and he wanted you? And then you're going to act like all these other people? That's not true. Now, we're going to get to two, part two in a few more minutes, all right? But in a few seconds, I'm going to drop this shit. So by the time y'all watch this one, I could drop part two in the morning. At least y'all know right now, right? And this is just so y'all can see. I'm just trying to clear the air. No beef, no harm. Me and Shockwell can have a live in front of anybody Oh, this is 57 seconds. My bad. I thought we was at an hour. All right, so the next topic. Oh, I said that 21 manifesto shit, right? Shit. Fuck, where the fuck you put a page? You know what 21 pages is? Maybe I ain't get that paperwork. Maybe it wasn't sent to us. Maybe, maybe you was like, we got another thing. But I do remember, right? If y'all, y'all remember, y'all remember he did some codes? Like, can I get a witness? I did that. Bang! Like, yo, what are you doing? Like, how are you trying to call something? This is what we just went through down on the island. Oh, yeah, I did the 275s and 200D. But I ain't nobody but a rude blood that was just down there while the format was being done by who? Like, this me on my time in the hood. You making this shit global. You trying to tell dudes in VA you did something that you didn't do. You trying to get credit for something that you never earned. Like, I only did one thing. And I had all the brothers coming, giving me phone calls, texts. You mad at me. You know what we went through. Then we had a big conference. Man, you did hours on the phone. I ain't see you since then. So I know you didn't care about nothing since then. And I'm only saying that because that story was ill. Like, what did you tell us? What did you tell the hood? Like, you must got a part two where you're going to correct this now that I'm doing this, right? You're definitely going to come back. Like, since you left that story alone, I'm telling the world that what you said was fabricated. You can ask anybody. Ask Dax Stone if he ever heard that Mac wanted you to run this hole. I'm going to name everybody that I know that was on YouTube. Sorry, I'm not trying to diss none of y'all, but I want to play the ask y'all that question. Forget him asking you. I'm asking you. Stack Stone, you ever heard you wanted Mac to run, to have um, um, Shaquille GKB in 96? Killer Kev, y'all family, you wasn't in the system, but I asked you just because, and I respect if you pick Shaquille. Um, also, boss, you just interviewed him. I seen the way he was looking. I can only guesstimate what thoughts I know from me knowing you, but you know your history, young bull. I mean, you ever heard of that? Um, I asked Mel Cross the same thing. I asked Hassan Campbell, which was a blood back in the days. I asked anybody that ever heard of that shit. Like, come on, man. Like, 
I'm just not trying to be what you want to be. You trying to get street law and the glorification of some type of relic. Like, come on, blood. This is gangster killer blood you talking to. Oh, you get two hours on this shit. My bad. I thought you get an hour. I'm new to this shit. All right, let's go forward, right? You say me and Mac might have talked and all this and all this. Uh, this is what Pimp did in his little, low, low run. 